my friends, you are in for a treat today. We are joined by Deanna Seymour, the dynamic host of the podcast, Big Fun Content. She's known for her vibrant approach to content creation and advocates for bold branding, lively design, and making impact with content that really resonates. She's not just about the content. She's about letting your unique personality shine through it. Deanna brings a refreshing mix of humor, empathy, and real talk to help you embrace your quirks and connect with your audience authentically. Today, she'll share her insights on creating content that's not only engaging, but also a true reflection of who you are. Get ready for a fun exploration into making your private podcast stand out. We are so excited for our next case study episode. You guys are going to love this one. This is chock full of creative ideas for using private podcasts, not a different, you know, offer like it's lead magnets and it's courses. However, it's like what goes into that podcast that we're going to talk about that's a little more specific and I think super fun. So we're excited to have Deanna Seymour on today to talk all about what she's been doing with Hello Audio for the past couple years now. Like you're pretty, you're a pretty early user, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So we're so excited to dive in and chat all about that. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm like, how long is this going to be? Let's nerd out. Let's talk about Hello Audio. I love it. It's one of my favorite things ever. Well, and you're one of our favorite people. So this will be a good match. Cool. So let's talk about the beginning. I actually remember the first call that you were on (laughs) and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm just kind of just playing around in my business, blah, blah, blah. So we want to talk about the beginning because I think for some people, you know, we're still in the early days of this so-called private podcasting world. And some people are even earlier than that. And I like talking about how they like came across the concept of private podcasting and what kind of clicked for them in their head where it was like, oh yeah. So what does that look like for you? Well, I actually met you on Clubhouse, if that dates us. No, wait, really? Yeah. And I was like in one of your Clubhouse rooms and I was like, okay, this is cool, like a private podcast. I had already started my first podcast, which I don't do anymore because originally I was like, okay, I learned you make a long form content and then you like filter that down and that's your newsletter and that's your stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. Am I going to blog or am I going to podcast? So I'm super chatty. So I was like, obviously, I'm going to podcast. That sounds like way more fun than having to crank out a bunch of blogs. So I just quickly started a podcast and was like, I'm going to be awesome and put lead magnets with each episode. I'm going to grow my list. I'm going to take over the world. And it was kind of crickets. I was not growing my list as fast as I wanted to with my podcast. And I was like, all right, well, this is not working as quickly as everybody promised me on their sales pages. How rude. (laughs) And then I met you guys and I was like, hold up, we can get that email address in advance. I can be like, hey, I made this cool thing. If you want to listen to it, give me your email address. So I was already intrigued. So it was like, okay, I'm like doing all this work on my podcast and people aren't really signing up for my lead magnets. How can I front load the, the email address? Give me that email address and then you can listen. And I was sold. I was like, all right, I love this. So that's what I did. And I started with my first series was also called the F that series. And (laughs) I'm laughing because as I'm reviewing my beginning stages of business, the reason my first podcast wasn't really converting is because it was a little all over the place, but I feel like you have to get your footing sometimes. So my first F that series was also all over the place. I was like, anything anybody wants to say F that to. (laughs) It doesn't have to do with business. It's whatever. So I had people on there who gave up drinking. I had people on there who don't eat flour or something. One person gave up diet culture. One person we all, I feel like, know, Liz Wilcox was on there talking about her new $9 offer saying F that to high price things. That was like the only real business one. But I actually doubled my email list, which... Sounds really, really awesome. But anybody listening, like I was very new in business. So I think I had, I don't know, 80 people on my email list. But then I had 160 people on me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And so through the years, I've honed my messaging and my offers and things make a lot more sense. But the general idea is still there. And it was something I could easily do that was really amazing. Yes. It's so funny. So we've been doing a couple case studies now. And so people who are binging this or, you know, listening as we drop them, we've talked about starting with a public podcast 
that it's not really meant for list building at all. And you did mention the thing that it is good at is like, yeah, maybe that's the way you want to create content. And so you create this long form. It, it's something I did in my prior business. Podcast was the easiest way for me to get thoughts out of my head and for me to show up for because I was like showing up to chat with somebody. That sounds great. <laughs> so yeah. I had an interview style podcast. And it was also a side thing that was more fun and not totally directed to me getting clients. But I know that choice that a lot of people make. It's like, I like to talk. A mic seems really easy, not a camera. And so we're getting down this path of like, cool, audio is the right choice. And then you're like, I'm trying to grow a business. And if this is one of your first or only ways of creating content, it just isn't good. Because as we've said multiple times on the show, it does. there's no way to collect email addresses. So essentially, you have these download counts that may or may not be tied to one person. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's... So many issues with just in general, how we count downloads, but even beside the point, like one download doesn't equal a person. And so you don't know who they are. And so yeah. along comes this concept of private podcast, which we didn't like invent in, in any way, shape or form. However, that technology was like very new and we were like, oh, marketers could really use this in a way that makes a lot of sense. So I love that you kind of came in through podcasting and then the audio piece is there. I loved Clubhouse. I miss it. Like rest in peace, even though I know it's still alive like, in a coma or something. I, yeah, right? I miss it though. I'm like, whatever happened that little moment of time, that was, that was super cool. So I totally forgot about that part of the story. There was a lot of people in 2020 that I think I met through Clubhouse. Super fun. So we have the first podcast you ever launched. So what I want to highlight for people listening is she just kind of took action. Now she wasn't a newbie with podcasting. So sitting down and doing audio was something you've done before. But I think what I love about this is you're like, eh, I'm just going to put it out there. And you grew your list, even though I think this is important. It wasn't super marketing focused, right? It, you weren't like, I'm going to do this because I want to get these people, this type of person. Now, Nora might have some thoughts on like conversions and like all of that. But like, the reality is you took action and you saw a result, a doubled email list. That's huge. My guess is you probably didn't have that with any other email list that you've done, any other lead magnet, sorry, that no. you've done. No, I had not. And so that's why I was super excited and saw the potential right away. I do remember kind of feeling like it was a moment too where I was like, people are talking about summits and that mm. would be cool to do, but I was too new and I was like, I can't do a whole summit. That feels really hard. So I think there were like, I want to say maybe eight, maybe 13. It was just a handful of people in the first F that series. And it was really doable because like you said, I already knew how to do a podcast. So I just did podcast interviews with them and then I just set up in ConvertKit. It was just the same way I was signing people up to download a PDF. I was just sending out the universal link because I was like, I don't know how That's to okay. add a listener. Yeah. I don't know what to do. And I remember telling my partner, Matt, I was like, I think I could charge for this. And I know some summits like are like you VIP pass or something. And I was like, I think I could charge for this. But then I started getting in my own head and I was like, okay, wait, this is going to like stop me from even doing it. Mm. So I was like, I'm not even going to charge for it. I just want to grow my list. But like, now that Hello Audio has its own cart and everything, I'm like, oh, you guys are so lucky. This is the way, but I didn't have that when I first started. But now I have moved into actually monetizing the F That series. And I have a few more seasons under my belt, which the one I just mentioned is retired because I, like I said, it was all over the place. <laughs> so that's the prequel. And so I'm just now releasing season three and there is an upgrade. Listen anytime you want and get access to past episode, past seasons. Oh, cool and future seasons, or I just keep it free for a week, like a summit kind of, and promote it that week and people can sign up for free. So that can grow my list. But also anybody who comes to my website in between a free week could also pay for the all access pass and get it whenever. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Smart. I like well, that I was, all access pass idea. Well, I was mad too, because I feel like I have some really cool guests, which make me look cool. I'm rubbing elbows with super cool people. And after the free weeks, I was like, oh, now it's like gone. How can mm. I still link to this on my website? And like, I did the work. It's there. And also, it's like, I don't want those episodes to just disappear and no one ever gets them. So now they're a cool thing to have on my website for people who want to listen to the past ones. I love so that. Different. And I, I love that you didn't overthink it. 
because yeah. I think far too often we overthink, well, what is it? What am I going to talk about? And I need to be in sure. Yeah. The first one ends up being a little all over the place and you still doubled your list and it's yeah. fine. And, yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. I know for a lot of us that have created content, they're like, there's, I think we kind of make up pressure. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like, we 100%. kind of make up this whole thing that it needs to be perfect or it needs to be super strategic or intentional. And the, the wonderful thing about audio is that you could just start talking about whatever you want to talk about and then you can pivot later. And granted, you're probably one of the most creative people, right? I think I just love your ideas. I love how you approach things and you see things differently. And the F That series, how cute is that? How fun is that? The name is perfect. And I love that you've refined it and now we're at season three. So, and we'll put the link down below for anyone who's interested in it, because I think that would be super cool if you want to check that out. But, and it sounds like you've used private podcasts in other ways in your business too. So I'd love to hear a little bit about how maybe are some of your favorite ways that you've used it. Yeah. Well, I guess one thing, I mean, it's definitely still part of doing the series thing, but I just feel like I've grown my network. I'm not a huge data person. Like that first, the first launch I knew my list grew because it was so tiny. And I feel like back then you're like, I got a new subscriber. Like every subscriber, you're like, oh my gosh, I love this person. So back then I kind of knew that, but now I feel like I don't, like it doesn't double my list because my list is way bigger, but it has really grown my network. And it's been a great way for me to also connect with people who want to do a podcast swap. So I also have a public podcast, which is also hosted through Hello Audio, but it's called Big Fun Content because that is more strategic about what I actually help people do, create content. Also love that name. So good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But I feel like when people want to do a podcast swap with me, sometimes they don't really have a topic that really has to do with content. And I really want to keep mm. that feed like super focused on the task at hand. So it's really easy for me to say, well, I have this other series F that where you can tell any sort of rule you're breaking in business and we can have you on that. And so that has helped me be able to not just network with people who are really strategic in terms of content, but mm. also I just love what you're doing with customer journeys or whatever else, anything anybody in the online business world wants to talk about. And anybody who I see that I'm like, oh, they're cool. I want to talk to them. I want to get to know them. It's easy to be like, hey, do you want to be on my F that series? So it's been a great way to grow my list. And hopefully now that I'm monetizing it, get some money and connect with people. So I don't know. That's not like a whole different idea, but I was like, wait, I just want to tell you that. No, and I... I, I think that's it. really cool. I think it's cool because I think it's um, something we haven't completely highlighted. I know Jordan Gill also is very big on networking. And I think her case study episode mentioned the relationships, but hers was more about with the audience. So she's talking about who's listening and the intimacy and the connections are really important to her. And the public podcast that she also has is like, I just don't know who they are. Yeah, I can ask what I should put on a show, but this feels more like... I put out this thing that might last a month or so and I get feedback from them and I add other things and then we continue on, right? And so you're bringing up this point about networking with other like guests, right? And yes. I think that's huge because as much as we've been, I don't know, dogging on having a public podcast first... Obviously, this is a public podcast. I, we've ranted about it a little bit in other episodes about why we chose to make this public and not, you know, quote unquote private. But I think what you're bringing up is, again, we dog on it, but we are not like they don't have a purpose. They absolutely have a purpose. The problem is that the purpose for a small business owner, someone who's, even if you've been around for a while, it's not the easiest to start a public podcast. And so the idea that would be the first thing you start when you're just starting out, we just don't think that makes sense. But now having two, right? So let's say you love audio and you know that having a public podcast isn't your like list builder per se, but it is an authority builder. It is a networking builder as you're doing. And so I love this idea of having a couple private podcasts that have different themes so you can keep that other one clean and tight. I love that. And I don't think I've really heard anyone position it like that or, or use it in that way. So I, I do think it's really important that you brought that up because we've heard people talk about private podcasts compared to public as like a way to get your feet wet. You know, oh, it's not public. So you don't have to show up every week. And it just, it feels easier and lighter. And yes, all of that. But I don't think we've ever had the like, hey, maybe a guest won't fit on this podcast, but I can make a mini series. And I love this. And I think this idea of niche content that we can create 
easily, quickly, but also brings value to maybe a segment of our audience, maybe not everybody, but some certain part that you want to focus on. I mean, that's, that's content gold right there. Well, and it's funny you brought that up because the first two seasons of F That, the first season was dedicated to breaking the rules of social media. And the second season was just breaking the rules of podcasting. And then the third one, I was like, okay, I am too all over the place. I just, I'm going to open the floodgates. And so the third one is whoever wants to break the rules. But for a second, I was like, maybe each season will have its own little container. But I, and again, with the data, the second season did not convert as well about podcasting, but I think maybe too, it was just like not that many people were yeah, podcasters. Too specific. So it was yeah. specific. So in mm-hmm. season three, I was like, okay, we'll just like sprinkle in some about podcasts. How do people break the rules with sales calls? You know, different, like I kind of tried to pick different topics. So at least somebody would be kind of interested in at least one. And then you're funny bringing that up too, because you were on my anti-hustle holiday account. Yes, I was. Which is my other private podcast that I have done two years in a row at the holidays. And that is totally a catch all. <laughs> I'm like anybody I just want to sit down and chat with and they get to share stories about their holidays. So the idea is, for business owners to take off some time during the holidays to just listen to other business owners be humans and tell stories about like their favorite recipes or memories or Christmas songs, whatever, and then get back to work in January. You know, that's kind of how it's positioned. And I think also, as you can see, like F that and anti-hustle, I'm really speaking to who I want to work with. So even though it's not like niche down as far as like Some people have been like, why are you doing anti-hustle holiday? Like, how does that even help your business? And I'm like, because anybody who would sign up for an anti-hustle holiday is somebody that I probably want to work with. And then they're on my, because it's a private podcast, they're on my email list. And then they get to hear more about everything I do. So it's really not pitchy at all from the guests or me. Mm -mm. I let the guests say like where they are to go find them for the new year or whatever. But it's really low on the like, pitching or even teaching like I'm kind of like don't teach them anything about business like we're all taking a break and that has been a really fun way to grow my list and that is like 20 interview like it's I wanted it to be kind of like an advent calendar but I was like but I don't want it to just be for Christmas so I didn't (laughs) do 25 I did like 21 or something I don't know and so who knows but it's a lot (laughs) actually at the end I was like wait did I just accidentally hustle for the anti-hustle like what's happening (laughs) but they're short episodes they're like 10 minutes just a quick little chat and it was really fun but again something that I didn't monetize in the past but this year I'm thinking about doing affiliate codes for all the speakers and also potentially like giving part of it to charity so Mm -hmm. I think that could be really fun so now that I've grown and got my feet wet and I sort of got my systems in place I just keep adding where I'm like oh then there could be two feeds a free one and a paid one and I know how to connect Thrivecart to ConvertKit and to Hello Audio. Like this, it's just building on itself. So I think yeah. like you guys were saying, just like getting started. I, I, I also feel like you can't, everybody talks about a growth mindset and everyone in theory is like, yeah, we, yeah, totally. You've got to fail to learn. But then when it comes to doing things, they're like, not me. I don't want to fail. I understand that, but like, I don't want to look silly. And so I just really feel like you have to it might just be my art background where you just have to like get in there and start doing stuff and fix problems and, you know, evolve as you do it. But I think just like getting started has been the best, best thing ever. And I'm like hooked. I'm gonna have to do Hello Audio forever because I have so many feeds now. <laughs> how many I'm do obsessed. you have? We've been asking guests. How many? How many? I, I honestly don't even know because I also do like workshops. <laughs> like I have a membership, so I record yeah. them. <laughs> Like I'm on the tier where I can have as you guys said I can have as many as I want, so I just <laughs> we're gonna cut you off. I know. <laughs> Do you ever look at someone because I can't turn this off personally? When I look at people's businesses, I'm like, you should be using audio for all of this types of content. Do you find now that you're seeing that with your clients too? Yes. And I'm like, is that bad? I'm like, I do this and I think it's awesome. So you should totally do it. And I always am like, take what you want. But like, I think you know, it would be awesome. I give advice. I'm, like, yeah, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but have you thought about a private podcast? <laughs> I have a person in my membership who is like for postpartum moms, you know, and I was like, girl, we got to round up. We got to round up some people. And she did a private podcast with a person who tells you how to introduce your dog to your baby, a person who was talking about how to include your partners more and all these different episodes. I'm like, wow, this is such a great resource for a new mom who is, you know, about to give birth all this real talk and different episodes with different people. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Cause It really is just, I was going to say the best. It really is just everybody who's listening is the best way (laughs) to give people information. (laughs) 
But I do think you can like live your life and have your headphones on that I'm just like, who? It just makes sense. And I'm just not a huge blog reader. There's people that I really love that write beautiful sub stacks that I follow and I open and I want to be the person who reads all the words. <laughs> but I'm like, I gotta listen to this. You gotta offer it as audio if you really want me to consume all of this because I just have a lot going on. I mean, everybody has a lot going on, but you know, there's two kids running around this house. So half the time, if I do try to read something long, it's interrupted, but I can walk and listen. It's just, I don't know. You guys are like, duh, we know we made it. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> No, it's good. I I always like hearing how people talk about that because it's true. Like I think there's something about reading something and reading, literally reading every word. You're like, no one does that. So it's begging to be skimmed. But then I'm usually doing it in a weird situation. My kid is napping and I'm doing this and it's like fast. I'm looking at my phone. I get the email. I'm like, oh, this sounds interesting. And then maybe I'll leave it in my inbox to check later. And I never get to it. Then I archive it. Like it's never in a, I'm never in a place to just sit down and casually read people's blogs. I read fiction, I will say. So I'm not, it's not that I'm not a reader. Like a lot of people say that I'm not a reader. I actually really enjoy reading yeah. fiction, <laughs> not like <laughs> stuff that I need. You know what I mean? So all that to be said, I feel like, yeah, we talk about this from the perspective of like, yeah, there is something really special with audio. Yeah. Some people I listen to on 2X, I'm not going to lie, but it's hard for me to skip. There's no skimming in audio, like skipping. You're like, wait, what are they talking about? You like want to be, the whole point is you're in the conversation with them. It feels like, and so you can't really skip that. That's one thing. And I think the other thing that we talk about a lot is like audio is often like a tied to a habit. Like there's something, there's this time carved out, which I can't ever really find for watching a video or reading my emails. It's like time that, you know, especially with reading emails, it's like time I can't even put on my calendar because I don't want to do it. So that's not good energy. But podcasting, it's like, I'm going on a walk. Like that feels peaceful. And this is what I'm choosing to do. I, that's not the same for like videos or emails. And so that's, that can be very powerful. And yeah, to me and Nora too, we're like, what? Like, why is not every single person have a private podcast? It just seems like the easy content. Yes. For a lot of people, it checks so many boxes for the creator themselves and for the people that are listening. And we always talk about both sides. So no worries about preaching to the choir. That's why we're here. We just want to say this over and over again, right? <laughs> yeah. While you were talking, actually, talking about audio, I was thinking about the course that I made during your hmm. audio course accelerator, mm -hmm. and that was called Steal This Course, which now it has had a name change because sometimes I'm a little too clever for my own good. So now the course is actually called Stop Buying you're Courses. Too, you're too much of an artist. I know. I was like, <laughs> Not a, so The clever. marketer and artist in you is constantly <laughs> in battle. I know. Gotta love Steal This Book references. I'm, I'll take it. I I was like, oh, this is so clever. And then I just found myself every time explaining to someone like, it's a course to help you stop buying courses. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's the new name. Stop buying courses. <laughs> stop buying so that's, courses. Which yeah. is also a really good name. <laughs> yeah. So that's my audio course. But we did, I did like a pre-sale for it. And the people who signed up early were invited to come to the online business shame show. So it was a Zoom call. We all had our cameras off and they could put fake names in. And we just talked about all the in investments we've made or sales pages we've fallen for funnels we fell into funnels <laughs> we've fallen into i can literally get up. see a person ah! <laughs> yeah. and it oh was God, just i just fell I, into one actually <laughs> i was like oh this is a really interesting way to use audio too because in descript i had never had to put in so many speakers but mm. we all had this big meeting so it was like a zoom meeting with 15 people and it was just really cool afterwards listening to audio with like, all these different voices that I was like, huh, this is a really cool way to use private audio also like this sort of round table idea. So that's the only place I've used that. But so many people email me and they're like, oh my gosh, hearing everybody else's story has made me feel so much better about the money that I've spent that I maybe shouldn't have or whatever. So that course was like really for me cathartic to just like release my shame of all the stuff I've bought that maybe I shouldn't have. And it sounds like it was helping other people. That offer of stop buying courses does not really lead into anything that I offer. Like it's not, doesn't really automatically go to, and I can help you with content or join my membership. Like it <laughs> More doesn't content. Really, you can make a course. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. lead yeah. anywhere. But I do find that people, it like really resonates with people and then they're mm -hmm. on my list. But that's only because it was a private, it's a private podcast. Like if it was 
just a podcast I put out or just, you know, Zoom recording or something. Like if I And it couldn't it, have been a it couldn't be yeah. a course that you had to buy in a course platform. Yes. It's a course is about <laughs> stop buying courses. They don't want it to feel like a course. Yeah. And I just felt like, oh my gosh, but this gets them on my list. And then that's where they learn more about me. That's what my welcome sequence is for. So again, you guys have just been talking about being creative and just letting it be something creative that you just kind of put out in the world. The last audio course I just made was is 20 minutes long. Like it's so short. And in the beginning, I'm like, hey guys, this is not going to be groundbreaking. It's 20 minutes. But the idea is it's going to help people make less content and more connection. And so it's a great place for them to start for real. Look at me getting more strategic before they get on a call with me to help them plan their content. Because really, that's what I like for people to think about, making less content, making it better. So all the pre-work is just me in their earbuds for 20 minutes and a worksheet that goes along with it. And it saves so much time that we could be on a one-on-one strategy call talking about that stuff. But I found myself just saying the same stuff. And I was like, oh, this needs to be that. And so it's also on my page as an opt-in because who doesn't want to make less content and have more connection? (laughs) So then people are signing up for it, getting on my list and have already done the pre-work if we move forward together. They're already kind of in the mindset or at least understand more about where I'm coming from and my point of view with content. And it's so low pressure. You don't even have to wash your bangs. (laughs) That's the other thing I love about it. (laughs) I'm like, we're not recording video on my podcast. I just script it out a little bit and hit record. And it's awesome. I, I, in my messages to the guests, I'm like, I know it's a video podcast, kind of. (laughs) So (laughs) I have video podcasts like shame, but we're doing it for the content. I mean, because then I have like reels from my podcast, but I don't want to do a whole podcast. Like I, and people can do obviously whatever they want. But for a second, when I rebooted as big fun content, I was like, and we're going to do a YouTube channel and we're going to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what am I doing? This is Mm. not my thing. Less content, but better. Mm. But I still record the video because then that's really easy content for me to put on reels. So when people say amazing little nuggets, you can share them with the world. So we just got to give the people what they want. Yeah. And sometimes it's holiday stories. And then sometimes it's strategic business. How to do less content. I love it. It's all the things. I think, yeah, that's what I love about the way you're using private podcasting. I think it's like the strategies there as your business grows, as you're learning more about what people need about your services. I think that's a big thing too. Yeah. As a service provider, you kind of start doing stuff and you're like, oh, I don't like doing that anymore. I'm going to not offer that. <laughs> and mm-hmm. This goes off the table. Totally. And you learn about how to attract the right person. And I would say from the get go, I think you focused on just being around cool people and people that you vibe with. And that, I think from a service pr- provider's perspective, I think a lot of people get into like, okay, I'm a coach and now I have to niche down and I coach on this. And it's like, yeah, but if you actually start thinking about, you put the people first that you're thinking about, right? And like, people you'd actually want to talk with every day. We've all had those clients where you're just like, oh, like I don't ever want another client like that again. Sometimes it's personality. Sometimes it's the way they run their business. Sometimes it's the way they behave in certain scenarios and you're just like, oh, okay, (laughs) thanks. Wish we didn't have to go through that. But I think what's cool is it was like you, even though you say there wasn't strategy behind what you put out, there was. The strategy just isn't maybe necessarily focused on conversions or like offers and whatever. It was more like I'm here building an audience. It was a very like creator strategy of I'm building an audience. I want to hang out with the people that I build in my community. I'm creating my place on the internet. I want to be known for these things. And so you have something called anti-hustle holiday. And it seems like, well, well, why would she offer that? But the reality is, oh, it's bringing a person who X, Y, and Z. The type (laughs) of person who will sign up for this does this. Like, so... I just want to say that I think there was strategy the whole time. It just maybe doesn't look like, yeah, the same way that we've been doing things, you know, the same prescription or like model or something. I think, Mm -hmm. I think it's easy as a new business owner. I remember this myself too, of being like, I don't know what I'm doing. Therefore I need to download all the things that tell me how to do it. And so it's so easy to fall in that trap early on um, because we don't believe we know what we need to do. And I think most of us do really. Um, And I think what you did is you took action on that instead of maybe just consuming. I think a lot of people get in the consumption 
I need to learn all the things before I put something out. I think it's it's cool to learn the story of your early days in business and then like where you've gone from here and how much audio has played a part in the ways you were able to pivot simply, the ways you were able to grow your business as well. I think that it's really cool to hear that whole kind of journey. Thanks. I've also in the past few years done some summits or bundles, which were very big on growth list for me. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. But here's the thing. It was a big growth. And then they just keep dropping off every email I send, gone, gone, gone. And that doesn't hurt my feelings. It just shows me that I grew a bunch with a lot of people who were not really my ideal people. And so it just made me love my private podcast even more. Because even though the numbers might be a little smaller with my private podcast, I mean, I've done some big bundles. So I will say that with just me promoting my private things, they're a lot smaller. But it's like those 80 people that I got the first time or, you know, the 150 people I get with the anti-hustle holiday are like my people. They're not going anywhere. They love me. They're stoked. Oh, those people are way more valuable than being in some big bundle where I get a bunch of people and they've signed up with email addresses for that bundle. So they don't even see any of my emails. Like it was just tricky because for a second I was like, oh, wait, maybe this is the way to go. And then I was like, no, no. So, and like I said, with the networking building, like there's for me in my business, there's nothing that could be, I can't think of anything else that could be the networking and the list growth that I've had Mm. with my series. So I'm curious if you've had comments from your listeners, Mm. like people who maybe weren't familiar, because we do have some folks that are, that sign up for Hello Audio and they're like, hey, my people are not podcasters. I don't think they're going to understand this. I don't think they're going to get it. And I'm nervous. So I'm wondering if you've had audience members and listeners who have signed up for one of your private podcasts, if they've given you feedback or maybe they weren't super familiar with the concept of a private podcast, but I'm just curious if you've seen any of those kind of stories come back around. That is really interesting, but I can't, I mean, I will say that I probably get the most feedback from the Stop Buying Courses one Mm. where people hear those stories. And I think there is something about like hearing it in people's voices, talking about, I spent thousands of dollars on this, or I bought this and didn't tell my husband and actually hear like reading that is one thing, but I think hearing somebody confess that in a Zoom room, and I'm not really sure whether they were podcast people or not podcast people, but I think for sure, since that was marketed as a course to Stop Buying Courses, I would venture to say that they're not always podcast listeners who sign up for that. I think the series are probably maybe more podcast listeners. But one thing I was kind of thinking, which makes me sound like a total jerk, but I'm like, who cares? We already got their email address, (laughs) which is like kind of jerky. But sometimes I will look on the back end because now that I've been with Hello Audio, I know how to add listeners. So I can kind of see what that person didn't listen to much or, you know, I'll go in and of course, up till now, it's been mostly free stuff. So I'm not going to reach out to them and be like, oh my gosh, is there a problem? Like what's happening? But one thing that I'm like, well, they're on my email list. So either they're like still getting value from me in a different way. If they didn't really love podcasting, but wanted to give it a try, if it didn't really work for them, I still think that I'm providing value because they're on my list. So even though it sounds jerky, but I do kind of think my emails are really good too. Being in my world is really worth it. So it's just worth your email address. But I think, I don't know. That's an interesting question. But yeah, in my brain for a second, I was like, who cares if they listen? You already got their email address. I love it. No, it's, it's interesting. People who aren't really familiar with listening to content, it's like it opens a different, like, just frame for them. Like, I can, this is real. I don't have to sit in front of the computer. I don't have to sit and watch a video. I can actually do something else and listen to this content. So we've seen some of our users have listeners that come back and they're like, I love this. Why are more people not doing this? I think everyone should do this. So just even if they're not as familiar, podcast listeners are used to listening to content on the go and they get to curate the podcast they listen to. So they're kind of more used to it. But the folks that are just kind of discovering audio listening and and really intentionally listening to content that they either purchased or raised their hand and said, yes, I want this. It, It kind of, it's a game changer for some folks. Well, and actually bringing up just audio, like podcast listeners. So the person in my membership was saying, Casey, sorry, her name's Casey. The Mindful Mom-to-Be podcast is her free series, but she also has a plan to 
start trying to guest more on podcasts, which was another reason we decided for her to make the series. Because I was like, when you go guest on podcasts, people are already podcast listeners. So if you're going to go on to a podcast and then at the end, you're going to say, well, I also have the series that will help you completely with getting ready for your baby. That's something they're going to want to do. They're into podcasts they're already listening. So that was like another reason we sort of chose for her to explore that because who wants to stop walking their dog and download a PDF? (laughs) They could always go and get it and keep listening. So again, also cashing in on the fact that some people do love podcasts. So like, how can you speak to those people too? So, you know what I'm hearing as, as you're talking about this, I'm like, Oh, you're like the series girl. So I'm wondering if you kind of, as we wrap everything up. You've obviously created a lot of content. A lot of it is private podcast. We love that for you. But I'm curious if you have any advice or thoughts that you have for people who are like, you know what, I think I want to create a series. And I I say that term loosely, but you've been using it a lot. And if you want to walk through maybe how you think of coming up with a series, how you tend to record it or reach out, anything you've learned in this, and then obviously you're also recommending it to clients. So maybe we make that the kind of big takeaway for our listeners. Yeah. Okay. So how I come up with it is just, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the Christmas one, I was like, it's almost Christmas. I love Christmas. Let's do an (laughs) advent calendar. But also strategically thinking the first year I did it, I also wanted to guest on more podcasts. So the first year, everyone who was on it was a podcast host, which meant that I had a connection with all of them. And then the following year, I was like, hey, you know, it'd be really fun for me to talk about on your podcast, this thing. So just thinking about who you want to connect with, like who do you want to collaborate with and what could be valuable to your audience? What would your audience want to sign up for? And then, I mean, since you said I had the process for recording podcasts down, but I mean, you just, I'm like, you just record them. And then I do very simple show notes for my series. Like I am like, you are an audio person. I'm an audio person. Whoever downloaded this is listening. I don't do extensive show notes for that. I do provide transcripts. But the show notes are just like bullet points. Here's the three things we talk about. And I always write those down right after we finish recording because I kind of hate it when I have to go back and it goes by and then I'm like, wait, what did we talk about? Then I feel like I'm like reliving it twice, like Groundhog's Day. So I do that. And then those are like the simple show notes. And then you guys have a cart now. I still use Thrivecart because that's what I know now. But tag them in ConvertKit send the thing through Thrivecart. And so if it's an opt-in, it's just a free thing in Thrivecart or they can use your cart. But And that's it. And then I set up like a Google Doc. Obviously, my thing is content. I make some Canva graphics for the speakers and just like give them some swipe copy. Just to be honest, I just copied when I was in bundles. What did I get? What did it look like? Mm. I love that you said we all kind of know what to do. Like you just sit down and you're like, okay, how do I get this to them? And then whatever platform you're on, you just do the thing (laughs) you have to do to get it (laughs) to them. Do what you think you would do. It seems silly, but it's okay. I want them to share it. Hmm. Where do I want them to share it? On Instagram. So here's some squares and here's some captions. And then you just do that. And I do find that for my series, having a start date and an end date kind of helps with people feeling, okay, we have to sign up by Friday. And it just gives yeah. like my brain an end to the promotion. And yeah. so in the way now that I'm doing the all access pass, it's like, this is called the free week, but I love that it can still live on my site now. So, I mean, it's $9 for the all access pass in my series. I'm not going crazy. So Now the $9 link can live on my website. And then as it ramps up for season four and there's going to be a free week, there will be the free button or a, you know, and I guess really I'm talking it out now, but the free button could stay up all year. They could sign up for the free feed now and just wait for season four to drop. So it's just about thinking, what do I need people to do? And what are my tools that help me do that? Nice. And I think what you're really good at too, is you just, you made it more complicated maybe the more times you did it. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're not worried about graphics for them to promote this first round and you're going to take on that promotion. Also, by Mm -hmm. the way, you have amazing graphics. So she's, so she nonchalantly is just like, oh yeah. And then I just like, whip up. she's also a really great graphic designer. You got to check out her stuff. So that's maybe a thing that you're really good at. So you could easily do that, but maybe that's the thing someone leaves off the table for this round, something like that. So just thinking about too, what I love is you've put out a couple of times you've enjoyed doing it. 
it. So then you up it every time. What can I add to this? Oh, now I'm going to like, oh, now this is a paid offer on my website. And this is how I can evergreen it. I think we get so caught up in trying to do all the things with the first thing because we know we should do all the, we want to do all of it. We know that it's possible and we see all these successful people doing stuff. You're like, I should do all of it. That's how we're with our podcast launch. Oh, we should do this and giveaways and this and that. And it's okay. Okay. Do we have the capacity for that? Or what does it look like? But sometimes we just need to like, you know, what do they say? Kill your darlings. It's so dramatic sounding, but it it is right. You kill the things that like, okay, next time we're going to do an email campaign or whatnot to promote it. Maybe that's not how you promote it this time. So I love that. I think I, I hope people got a lot out of this episode specifically around the unique ways that you can use it. Not overthinking it is a big takeaway for me. And then also how you think about the series and the, being able to use it in multiple ways, I think is super helpful. And I'm also like an open book. So if anybody wants to reach out to me on social media or anything like that, I'm very chatty and I'm an open book. So hit me up if you have any questions about anything I said, if I didn't speak in complete sentences, which I tend to do interrupt my own self sometimes. So anyways, yeah, I'm around. We have a fun question that we ask every guest on these episodes, and it's always just super fascinating to hear everyone's answers. So if you had a private podcast of your life's ramblings, what would it be called? So my nickname is Dee Dee, so I feel like Dee Dee's got to be in there somewhere. And back in the day, I had a Tumblr blog called Dee Dee Does Drawing. So like every day I would put a little drawing or a doodle on there. And I also had one when I was on OkCupid before I was married, that was Dee Does Dating. So I feel like it would have to be like Dee Does Life. I don't know. Dee Does Boring Suburban Mom Life. (laughs) Dee Does Audio. (laughs) Trying to be relevant with pink hair, but still drive a van (laughs) life. It's a working (laughs) title. It's a working title, but yeah. I feel like with some massaging, yours would be really good because I feel like your stuff is already like a vibe of cool and fun and quirky. And so the idea of life ramblings totally fits you. So you can come back with your mock-ups of your... Well, you know, I had a private feed called Storytime with Dee Dee for oh, a there second you go. that was for my emails for me to ramble on about the story. Like I kind of tell stories in my emails, but I wanted to be like, click here to hear the whole story. Mm. But we didn't even lost. talk about that feed. I know. It didn't <laughs> because one. honestly, I didn't have a lot of time. This is enough of a story. They don't need the whole story. Because then I got a little <laughs> accidentally like over, like a little perfection-y about it. Uh, it wasn't as rambly as it should have been if it was going to mm. be easy. You're like doing sound effects. I know. I'm like trying to make it so funny. I'm like, and then. <laughs> Guest audio <laughs> narration. <laughs> yeah. But Which that could be cool. Yeah. Story time with Didi. Maybe it would be that. So I like bring that, that back. Oh my gosh. Super fun. Well, I knew this would be a fun, creative episode. We're super glad you were able to make it out. So thanks for hanging. Thanks for having me. This was so fun. And there you have it, audio heads. Another episode of Laundry Private Podcast is in the books. I hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways. The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time.